Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Mike Throtus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. And yes, indeed, we are seeing Bible prophecy be fulfilled right before our eyes. We are living in the last of the last days. Jesus said that the generation that would see Israel come back as a nation would be the generation that would see his return, that would see the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We are seeing that happen right now before our eyes. If you stay with me, I'm going to talk to you about a prophecy from Zechariah, who was, he prophesied it almost 2,000 years ago, and yet it is happening right before our eyes. Then, at the very end of this video, I'm going to go back over to the book of Revelation and go over the seals once again and explain to you where I see the rapture occurring and how close we really are to the rapture. We don't have time to waste. You better get ready. The rapture is going to happen soon, and we have to be ready. Jesus Christ is coming back. But first, let's go to the prophecy of Zechariah. As I said earlier, we are seeing Bible prophecy be fulfilled. There are nations rising up against Israel. That Israel is practically entirely surrounded by its enemies. You would think that Israel, this nation that was brought back from the dead in 1948, would, 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 this is it for them, that they have no chance of getting out of this. I've already, uh, as I prophesied, it's already happened. Public opinion now has turned its tables on Israel. People want Israel to stop. People want to divide Israel. People are, are getting sick and tired of the nation of Israel. This is to be predicted. This is what the prophet said would happen in the last days. We are literally seeing prophecy happen right before our eyes. You couldn't write it any better than this. It's happening. In fact, it's already been written. Look at Zechariah chapter 12 for just a minute. This is the prophecy that I wanted to share with you today. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2. Zechariah wrote this almost 2,000 years ago. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness, to all surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Jer Judah and Jerusalem. Another translation says, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. And it shall happen in that day, verse 3, that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. These two verses is what's going on right now in the world and in Israel. Jerusalem and Israel are surrounded. I've watched military guys on analysts on TV and they show these maps and Israel is surrounded on, on every side by enemies. The public opinion that just a few weeks ago was all for Israel has turned against Israel. And there are nations who are protesting Israel and what's going on right now. Public opinion has turned that quick. And I prophesied that that would happen. But it will not be Israel who will fall. No, Israel, according to Zechariah, will be a cup of trembling to all who surround her. I like that example. When somebody is really afraid, you've maybe seen it in some of those old Western movies, and they grab a drink, and they're shaking, their hand is shaking, they're trembling, and they're trying to take a drink. That is the description of what is happening and what will continue to happen to the nations who are surrounding Israel and Jerusalem. God will create that land, Jerusalem and Israel, to be a cup of trembling, for all those people that want to destroy them, to want to annihilate them. I like the next verse too. Israel shall be a heavy stone for anyone who would try to heave it away. I did manual labor, labor, and I still do some occasionally. And I remember clearing fields where I'd have to pick up heavy stones, rocks, boulders, 
So, sometimes I couldn't even lift them up. I'd have to roll them out of the way. Israel is going to be a heavy, heavy stone. It won't be able to be heaved aside. It won't be able to be pushed into the sea. They won't just disintegrate and melt. Israel will stand. Zechariah prophesied it. No nation will be able to remove them. Besides that, look at, look at the latter part of verse 3. I will surely cut in pieces though all the nations of the earth are gathered against them. God help our country that we stand beside Israel. If not, the nations that are opposed to Israel will be cut to pieces, it says right there. We are seeing nation after nation rise up, and they will not succeed against Israel and the land and Jerusalem. That late nation, that city, must remain intact. Bible prophecy is so interconnected with Israel, Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. It's there on the Temple Mount that they talk, that Scripture talks about the Antichrist going into a rebuilt Jewish temple. If Jerusalem is destroyed, if Israel is eradicated, you won't have a temple mount any longer. And you certainly won't have a temple. This is during the tribulation period. And some people think that the tribulation period could just be months away. Israel is all through the book of Revelation. It all happens in Israel. Bible prophecy happens in Israel. Israel is the prophetic clock. Israel is the fig tree that Jesus said to watch. The Lord returns at the end of the tribulation when Jerusalem is surrounded by enemies who want to destroy it. Well, if Israel's destroyed and Jerusalem is, is demolished, why would anyone surround a pile of rocks? No, they'll be there to the very end. They'll fight it out on the plains of Megiddo, right outside the city of Jerusalem. Israel's not going to be destroyed. Israel cannot be destroyed. The nation will be here. The people will continue to exist, and the Temple Mount will have a temple on it very soon. It's all about Israel and Jerusalem. The return of Jesus Christ. The first place he touches down is on the Mount of Olives, right outside of Jerusalem. Zechariah tells us that during the millennial reign, it's Jesus who establishes Jerusalem as the capital of the entire world. You're not going to destroy Jerusalem and Israel. It's too heavy of a stone. You cannot remove it. And for the enemies, it's a cup of trembling. Now, the persecution that we're seeing is very interesting. We are seeing, as I said earlier and prophesied, the, the world has turned on Israel in just a few weeks. There are demonstrations worldwide where people want Israel to stop. People want Israel to, I don't know, they want to tell Israel what to do. And there are, there are Jewish people who are persecuted and they are afraid for their life. This is what I think is a foreshadowing of the persecution that's going to come to Christians very, very soon. You may be saying, oh, that can't be. We can't be persecuted. Let's look at the scriptures. Matthew chapter 10. Stay with me. I'm just about finished, and then I'm going to go over to the book of Revelation. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus is speaking and in verse 16 or verse 17, he says, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as, I, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, don't worry about what you should say, for it will be given to you. That's encouraging. Some of us who are going to uh, be brought up on charges for being a believer in Christ Jesus, you might be thinking, what am I going to say? You don't need to worry. God will give you the words to say at that time. Then he says, brother will deliver up brother to death. Father is children. Verse 22, and you will be hated. And you may be thinking to yourself, 
Pastor Mike, you're wrong again. That's talking about the Jews, not the Christians, not believers. Believers aren't going to be persecuted. Let's look at the scripture. And you will be hated for all, by all, for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. It seems to me that believers are going to be persecuted for Jesus' name, for the sake of Jesus, because they believe in Jesus. I know this isn't a popular message. Matthew chapter 24. We read about the birth pains, the wars, the rumors of wars, the famines, the earthquakes. That's happening. We're seeing it happen now. Just as birth pains get more and more intense, so too are all these signs happening. These are the beginning of sorrows. But look out what else it says. And many will be offended and betray one another. And they will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Then they will deliver you, verse 9, up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Once again, right there with the birth pains is the persecution of believers, of Christians. And I believe that what we're seeing happening um, with the uh, people of Israel, the Jewish people, is a foreshadowing of what's going to happen as the world begins to turn against believers. You want to be in the last days? These are signs of the last days. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 6. I won't teach all of this right now, but I have taught before for, for, for um, a couple of years now. We are seeing the seals of Revelation 6 being opened right before our eyes. The first seal, the rider on the white horse, was opened January or February 22nd, 2020. If you read, it talks about this rider was given a crown, a corona, and he was, he was told to go throughout the world and conquer. We have never seen such a thing as happened in 2020, where millions of people were killed. Nations were shut down. This rider on the white horse was given a bow. A bow wants to shoot things. This, this rider is still riding, and I think he's going to make a reappearance. The second seal was opened on February 22nd, 2022, when Russia invaded Afghanistan. This started a, a cascading event of nations falling in line as, as we experience a proxy war among superpowers. We are in a world war, and now when Israel uh, has been pulled into it, we have a naval uh, fleet in the Mediterranean. We are just moments away from a world war. We are seeing this red horse rider ride throughout the world. We're talking about cyber war, biological warfare. Um, every type of warfare imaginable is, is, is right now in the mix. They're even talking about detonating small tactical nuclear bombs. The rider on the red horse and the second seal is open and we're seeing it before our eyes. The third seal is the black horse. We're not there yet. I predict we will be there February of next year, 2024, late February, early March, 2024. The world will go into a worldwide inflation where it will take a day's wage for a loaf of bread. That's coming soon. Then, shortly thereafter, the pale horse comes. When people begin to start starving and the wars begin to mount up, it says that one-fourth of humanity will be destroyed. That's two billion people. The next seal, I wanted to get into that, is the fifth seal. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain. For what? The word of God. And for the testimony which they held, there will be great persecution and believers will die when the fifth seal is open. And they cried with a loud voice and said, How much longer, O Lord, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? We will see persecution and believers will be dying 
as the fifth seal is open. The sixth seal is the rapture. Now, isn't this exciting? In one sense, if we've already seen the first seal open and the second seal open, and we're getting ready to see the third seal open, we're very, very close to the rapture. You may say, I don't see the rapture in the sixth seal. Doesn't sound anything like what Paul is talking about. Paul is describing the rapture from the perspective of a believer going up. John is describing the rapture of those people who didn't go up. Let's look at it real quick and then we'll close. I looked and he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded up as a scroll. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Of course, the sky looks like it's being receded up as a scroll. When you have hundreds of millions, first of the dead in Christ being resurrected and then raptured and going up to be with Jesus in the clouds, then you have hundreds of thousands of believers on this earth being uh, changed in a moment and being raptured to be with Jesus in the clouds and the atmosphere above the earth, of course it's going to look like the sky is rolling up. After that happens, the kings of the earth hide under the mountains and they cry out to the mountains, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Those left behind know exactly what has happened. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? These people that John watched who missed out on the rapture realized exactly what had happened. They missed the rapture and the wrath of the Lamb of God had come upon the earth. And we know this to be a fact. So we know that we have to be gone before this. The wrath of God, the wrath of Jesus is never poured out upon his church, upon his children. We are gone before the wrath comes. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that you continue to watch these videos. I like to encourage people and let them know that the rapture is soon, that we have to be ready. We have to be born again, first and foremost. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.